Growing up in the UK throughout the 1980s, toy soldiers were an integral part of my childhood playtime, and there was one particular brand that stood head and shoulders above all others, Britain's Detail. These metal-based plastic soldiers set the standard for quality in the toy soldier industry at that time, and the range was incredibly diverse, with sets inspired by the Napoleonic Wars, the American Civil War, and even the French Foreign Legion. I had a lot of Britain's detailed toy soldiers in childhood, but the ones I enjoyed playing with the most were their World War II sets. First released in 1971, the Britain's company launched their new World War II range by coming out with six German soldiers and six US infantry. It surprises me that the company came out of the gate with American soldiers and not British infantry, yet the Tommies were added to the line two years later. Where I found the World War II sets to be the most exciting to play with, Within that vast range, you would most often find me wargaming with the Brits and the Germans. And in this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at these two classic Britain's detail sets. Stay tuned. Come with me, toy fans. Hey, toy fans. My name is Tony, and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. A week or so ago, I was watching the It's Chad YouTube channel, and Chad and Laser Pants of the 3POA podcast were discussing the longest running toy line in the world. So that's got to be one of the longest toy lines that's consistently been being released, because G.I. Joe even took a break. Oh, numerous times, yeah. Yeah. Of course, people mentioned things like Barbie, which came out in 1959, and Lego, which was released a year earlier. And Dinky's been going for over 90 years. Yet Britain's toy soldiers have been sold consistently for 131 years, and they're still soldiering today. I very much doubt there is any other toy line in the world that can claim to have been running longer than Britain's. But if I am wrong, please let me know in the comments below because I'd be genuinely interested to find out of another toy line that's been going for more than 131 years. From its inception, the W Britain Company produced painted metal toy soldiers. Yet due to safety concerns regarding the use of lead, the company switched to manufacturing plastic toy soldiers in the 1960s. Then in 1971, Britons introduced their massively successful detail line of toy soldiers. These figures were 54 millimeters tall, which is the one to 32 scale. And they were finished with hand painted details and came with sturdy metal bases made from a material called Zamac. The metal bases meant that these toy soldiers could stand much better than other plastic soldiers available at the time. And their superior sculpting and paint set the benchmark for quality in the toy soldier market. The plastic manufacturing process also allowed for more dynamic poses than what could be achieved with metal cast soldiers. And on several figures, Britons produced the arm as a separate molding that would then plug into the shoulder and be glued in place. This enabled them to produce soldiers in such poses as standing firing or running with bayonets. And this innovation was game changing. Another key reason the detail line was so successful is that Britons always offered opposing factions for each conflict, so children had an instant play scenario to immerse themselves in. Each set typically consisted of six different toy soldiers, and Britons Detail sold these figures in a variety of ways. They could be purchased individually, or as box sets of six soldiers, and in larger deluxe sets, such as this one that included both the British and German infantry. I would love to own this particular box set, but alas, they are very rare, and on today's secondary market, they are way, way out of my price range. Where were you last week? Berlin. What are you doing there? Just keeping me eye on the Germans. <laughs> the first German infantry box set, number 7350, was released in 1971, and consisted of one German soldier kneeling firing, one kneeling machine gunner, one running machine gunner, one soldier charging with bayonet, one firing a machine pistol, and a grenade throwing figure. The figures were all produced in a field grey coloured plastic, with black paint applied to their boots and belt gear, a flesh tone painted on their faces and hands, brown paint used for the weapons, and the charging soldier even had a lick of silver paint applied to his rifle's bayonet. All the German toy soldiers also came with a small paper sticker on the side of the helmet, and they are very challenging to find today with the stickers still intact. Arriving two years after the Germans, the British infantry were included in set 7342 and were released in 1973. Yeah, Tommy. Before the Germans get there. The Tommies are a truly wonderful set of Britain's detail figures, which included a kneeling firing soldier, a standing firing soldier, a Bren gunner, an officer with pistol, one soldier charging with rifle and bayonet, and a grenade throwing figure who holds a Thompson in his opposite hand. 
The British officer is my favourite in this set because his sculpt is just so full of motion. The figure is produced in a brown plastic to match the colour of British World War II battle dress, and paint applications highlight important details, such as his binoculars and small pieces of camouflage on his helmet. He even has a lanyard running from his pistol to his shoulder, and this detail certainly could not have been included on a metal figure produced at that time. To further expand our play scenarios, Britain's also offered infantry support weapons for our different armies, with both the British and the Germans being issued with mortar teams. These came on larger metal bases and included two soldiers, with one holding a mortar round at the ready and the other preparing to give the command to fire. The die-cast metal mortars were also spring-loaded, and each set came supplied with a number of plastic mortar shells that could be fired from the tube and then get instantly lost in the living room carpet. To further bolster your Axis and Allied forces, Britain's Detail also offered a number of high quality vehicles. In my German collection I have both the German Dispatch Rider and the German Army Combination, but I would love to add some more, such as the Kubel Wagon or the Kettenkrad. The German Dispatch Rider has a beautifully detailed die-cast motorcycle that features plastic seats and a plastic Mauser rifle that attaches to his back via a plug. A sat-nav that only goes to Poland. <laughs> The German Army combination also features the same die-cast motorcycle, now attached to a sidecar fitted with an MG42 machine gun, and other fantastic details, such as plastic cargo pouches and a spare wheel carried at the rear. The only British vehicle I own is the Assault Craft, yet this is a really fun toy. This plastic boat is fitted with an outboard motor and is manned by two British troops. A Bren gunner kneels at the bow, while an officer is both firing his pistol and driving the boat at the same damn time. Jolly good show, Major. Just like my German mechanised forces, I also have a number of gaps in my British vehicle fleet, and I would love to add the scout car one day, or possibly the Land Rover. Where most Britain's detail sets rarely expanded beyond the core grouping of six toy soldiers, the Germans proved so popular at playtime that they were afforded a second series that was released in 1977. The German infantry set 7380 included an officer, a marching soldier, a machine gunner, a radio operator, a standing firing soldier, and a flamethrower trooper. Again, the officer is my favourite in the set, and I adore the addition of the miniature paper sticker map. Yet I also really appreciate the flamethrower soldier, with his forward moving stance and large fuel tanks on his back. The radio operator is also very nice and has been sculpted in a kneeling pose and his radio is adorned with a foil sticker that features added printed details. There is something very poetic here about the Tommies being vastly outnumbered by the Jerrys in the Britain's Detail line, as this was the reality for British forces throughout the first few years of the war. As was the case with many children who grew up in the 70s and 80s, both of my grandfathers served in World War II, and while one of them never talked about his wartime experiences, the other one did, quite often. During the war, we pursued a German battleship. After listening to my grandfather's tales of service with the British Army, I would immediately pull out my Britain's Detail toy soldiers and live out his adventures vicariously through the medium of play. The Britain's Detail range tapped into something really special, and this classic toy line became a staple of countless British childhoods. And as I look back now, I just can't imagine my childhood without them. Britain's Detail was an evergreen mainstay of my playtime due to their timeless nature, and the fact that they weren't tied to any media, like so many of my other toy interests in the 1980s. It's a major reason why Britain's Toy Soldiers are the longest running toy line in the world, and their commitment to quality and detail is why, after 131 years, they also remain one of the very best. So thank you all for watching, and I'm wondering how many of you guys played with Britain's Detail in your childhood. Let me know in the comments below, and if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, do yourself a favour and click that subscribe button. It's easy, it's free, and it really does help the channel. I'm Tony from Analog Toys, and I'll see you in the next video.